Ah, uh, is it gonna slip? There it goes. Welcome to Startup Chuck. You may remember I had cracked a safe a while back. It was a safe I had bought, didn't know the combination to, the one they gave me didn't work. And so I built an auto dialer and I was able to get into the safe. Now the auto dialer worked really well and it took about 13 hours to get into the safe if I remember correctly, but it uh, wasn't super robust. You know, I built it as a prototype for it to just work that one time and I left it at that. Well, since then, I've been getting more and more into cracking safes. And my buddy, who is a handyman out in Colorado, called me up and said, hey, I've got another safe for you to crack. And so it is a 4,000 pound safe at a motel. It's beautiful. And uh, the whole deal is I'm gonna go out there and go skiing and at the same time, go and crack the safe open. Now, in order for me to do that, uh, I'm going to try and manually manipulate the lock and figure out a couple of the dial wheels. But at the same time, I want to have an auto dialer backup. And so I have created Rev2 of my auto dialer, and it is everything that you would expect from a heist movie. It is awesome. So I'm going to walk you through all the cool features it's got right now. So I don't know if you remember, it had this magnetic clutch that pops whenever it reaches too much torque on uh, the locking mechanism. Typically when you get through the correct combination, you're either going left or right, and then the whole entire dial will lock up. And so this magnetic clutch will pop, and that uh, will then expose this photo gate here. I've got magnetic feet, and those are adjustable with these sweet little magnetic or uh, adjustable like camera post mechanisms. I think these are meant for camera rigs. Um, and then I've got the screen and all the electronics integrated. I added a switch so I can control between different dial directions. So you've got right, left, right. You've got left, right, left. And that just determines whether you're going one way or the other to start. I've actually found on some safes that you can actually dial it both ways. And then if you jiggle it a bunch and press on the lever a little bit, it'll open up the safe. I'm hoping that's gonna be the case. So all in all, this thing is pretty awesome. It actually even has uh, little levers here that you can loosen up and then you can fold in the feet so that it's nice and compact and easy to store, which is super cool. So all in all, nice, small, compact package. And then the, the business end that goes on the dial, I now have a three jaw chuck that I 3D printed. And the nice thing about this is it's lightweight. So since I could 3D print it with about a 25% void, it's super lightweight. I wrap the dial with some 3M VHB very high bond tape. And then I put the three jaw chuck on there and then I zip tie around it and it is solid. I've practiced a ton of manipulation or not, well, I guess manipulation, auto dialing manipulation with it. It's never slipped. And I was talking to another safe cracker and he was complaining about how his auto dialer, if it's too small of a dial knob, it'll slip. And so I think that this VHB method is actually a key to ensuring that you don't slip at all. And typically you can just peel it right off when you're done. I haven't had an issue yet. So uh, part of the, the interesting problem that you have is backlash. So getting the dial to where it always ends up at the exact same position, going one way or going the other way, uh, you need to adjust for that in the program. I've uploaded the program to GitHub. So the software that's just running off an Arduino R uh, Uno, is available on GitHub. The files, I'll have a link to my Onshape files as well for it. So anybody can print one of these out. Um, I'm not gonna help you if you have issues figuring out how to solder it together and whatnot. But if you wanna take it on and figure out how to read the code and where to solder stuff and make it all work, then you know, I think you'll, you'll do fine. Um, so part of the coolest stuff is the dial was moving so quick that I had 
the hardest time figuring out whether or not it was landing exactly on the numbers. And luckily I remembered I've got a high-speed camera in my pocket like most people do. At least something that can do 240 frames a second. So I put it into 8x slow mode and just check out the videos. It is super cool how you basically can just slow it down and see whether or not it's landing on the number or not and saves a ton of time in guesswork. Another thing in order for me to prep cracking this safe in Colorado, I had to learn a ton about old safes. So it looked originally to me like it was a Mosler from 1904. Turned out it wasn't. It's actually a carry safe from Buffalo, New York. And uh, they went out of business in 1929. So it's at least 100 years old. I found carry actually has in archive.org a catalog of their safes and based on what I'm seeing it looks like it's about 4,000 pounds now that's a lot of weight it's double doored there's steel line plus asbestos on the inside and I'm sure covered in lead paint so I'm gonna have to be really careful um, but the cool thing about the lock is it's a Yale Y6 lock and they have gears in them that mesh if you want to see what the uh, meshing gears look like. There's some other videos online, but um, the problem with that is you can't listen easily with like a stethoscope and see where the, the pickups are and um, it makes it difficult to, you know, crack the safe with audio, but you can still manipulate it and uh, do the regular manipulation method to figure out a few wheels. So my goal is go in, uh, determine one or two wheel combinations, and then just set the auto dialer on it to finish it off and crack the rest of it and hopefully only like 20 minutes. Because if you already know two wheels and you know which positions they're in, there really shouldn't be a whole lot more dialing to do. And maybe you're off plus or minus a little bit on those, and so you just set a range. Um, but either way, we're gonna find out. I'm gonna live stream it. I'm also gonna live stream cracking. Uh, I have bought a similar safe just an hour north of here in Ogden. And that was another adventure. I am driving an hour to pick up a antique safe that's got the same combination dial group as the one that I'm going to have to go and crack in Colorado. Um, I'm just lucky that somebody even had an old Mosler safe in Utah. So it's an hour north of me in Ogden and uh, it's at an old attorney firm and they had it as an antique and I'm sure it weighs a million pounds. And so I've got like a come along and a ramp and a hand cart and I'm just going to brute force my way of getting this thing into the car and getting it home and then I can test it out with the safe cracker. I don't know if you've ever tried to move a 1000 pound safe before, but it is hard. Getting it up the ramp without destroying the car. And then I had to create a very intricate set of anchors and pulleys and ropes in order to get it all pulled into the car. And then the suspensions weighed all the way down. What a mess. Driving back through a snowstorm. Got my thousand pounds of weight in the trunk so that if I get into a car accident, I'll get completely wrecked. So I'm driving nice and slow in the snowstorm. Didn't get hurt getting it in the car, so hopefully I don't get hurt getting it out. All right, so this is the situation I've got right now. I've got a thousand plus pound safe in the back of my car, and I got to get it out. Now, initially, I was just going to floor the car in reverse and then slam on the brakes and drop it off the back. But problem is, if it lands... Uh, on the side that's got the lock on it. Um, I don't want to damage the lock. So I could do that if I take the door off, but that's a lot of work to take the door off. 
And uh, so I'm just going to set my ramp up and then put it against the other car here and winch from this car over to where the safe is and then have another set of, uh, I guess, a brake line to slowly lower it down so it doesn't just slide. We'll see. Either way, um, I have to at least hook something in so that the ramp doesn't just fall off the back of the car. All this is because I don't have a truck because I don't believe in trucks. I believe in using every vehicle like it's a truck without actually getting one. So, I don't know, my issue. <laughs> finally got the safe off of the car. Unfortunately, when I tilted it upright, it cracked one of the wheels, so I'll have to repair that. Otherwise, the safe is just absolutely beautiful. The door swings open easy. It's got a great old letter styling, old rug on the inside, smooth actuation. It's got this cool little uh, cabinet that you can lock if you'd like for I don't know, whatever goodies you want to store inside. So I bought another similar safe. It is from 1889. It's a Mosler. It also has a Yale lock on it. And uh, it has been my basically dial I've been playing with to like figure out exactly what it's going to be like when I go to crack this one in Colorado and whether or not my auto dialer can do it. One of the problems I figured out was that my auto dialer would not work unless I had a light tension on the lever and that light tension allowed then uh, the <clears throat> the arm to go into the slots on the discs to where it needs to latch and then open up. So here it is trying to use the auto dialer to open up the lock. And if you listen carefully you can hear where it's almost opening it and then it fails. All right, so I got my light tension here with this bungee that you can see. And so now we're going to try it again with some light spring tension. Oh, that worked great. I didn't even need to have very much tension on it with the bungee. Luckily, it's a two-handled safe I'll be doing, so I can just tie one uh, end of the bungee to the other handle and then have this one hooked up to it. So that's great. Um, I'm feeling pretty good about this. And so, uh, I also found out that with a little light tension and jiggling back and forth, it didn't matter if the lock was right, left, right, or left, right, left. And that I found super interesting. Um, maybe it's just because it's a non-directional slot like a lot of the newer locks are more directional. The other one is just kind of a, a lever and um, it's kind of gets cammed in there with the gear. So again, check out the Yale Y6 lock uh, videos online. Um, and if you're curious about how those old gear styled locks work. I hope you like that video. Please subscribe so that you can stay alert to when I do my live stream of me cracking the safe in Colorado. They said I could do a live stream there at the motel, so I'm gonna be doing it. And uh, I'll also do another live stream with me cracking the safe at my house, the 1889 Mosler safe. So please subscribe and uh, check out my other videos and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks.